So if in our minds we have been thinking that it's okay to cut off family members, let this be a reminder that it's not okay to do that. Let's th let this be a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken against that in the harshest of terms. And before the end of the khutbah, inshallah, we'll touch on even more of these. So let's look at the parents. So now we're looking at the rights. And this is all about how we can be a source of comfort to each other when we maintain these ties. In Surah Luqman, which is chapter 31, Allah says, We have enjoined upon man goodness to his parents. His mother bore him strain upon strain, and his utter dependence on her lasted for roughly two years. O oh man, be grateful towards me and towards your parents. And remember that to me is where all journeys end. Look at what Allah does here. He ties this concept of Tawheed The honor that they have in Islam is high. And this is the month of fatherhood, right? This is the month in which we celebrate Father's Day. And I know some of you are already saying that stuff for Allah, we don't do that. This is the month of fatherhood. How many of us look at it as an opportunity to do something that we may neglect many other times in the year, which we have to do? We have to respect our fathers. And many of us are running up and down busy, and we forget to maintain this tie. And we have the blessing of a reminder. And because of our ignorance, we say what? I am not going to use this as a reminder to connect with my father. And then the month passes, another month passes, three months pass, and we have not connected with our fathers as yet. And then we are saying we are grateful for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. How we how are we? putting those two things together. Who is teaching us our Islam? Who is teaching us our Islam? The Prophet said, there are three things in which the presence of good work do nothing. Meaning, as much good work as you do, they are battered, they are useless, they, they, they fade away. What are the three things? If you associate partners with Allah, if you are disloyal to your parents, and if you run from the battlefield. So disloyalty to your parents is one of those things that, regardless of how much good work that you do, it's almost like it's nothing. And it's up to Allah to accept. But it's almost like it's nothing. This cannot be us. We cannot say that we are believers and we ignore the rights of our parents. So I want to pause here for a while. We have a golden ticket to attain gender. A golden ticket to attain gender. What do I mean by that? The Prophet said, disappointing of, or, or shame on the one whose parents attain old age, one or the both of them, and he does not attain Jannah by serving them. So we have a golden ticket to enter Jannah if we are alive when our parents reach their old age. How many of us take advantage of that? So let's pause. You're driving, you're hustling, you're bustling, you're working 16 hours a day. Your mother calls you on the phone. 
Son, I need you to come do this for me. I'm like, Mom, right now, the man has me under his thumb. I can't really help you right now. Call me next week. Mom calls you next week. Mom, I'm still working on this project. Can you call me tomorrow? She calls you tomorrow, but you know why she's calling you? And what do you do? You ignore it. I can't answer that right. I'm not going to... Does this fly in the face of what the Prophet wasalam, said? Shame on him, or shame on him whose parents attain old age, and he does not attain Jannah by serving them. We have a golden opportunity to serve our parents, and how many of those blessings do we pass up? How many times do we walk past those blessings and then turn around and say, Oh Allah, give me Jannah. Allah has put Jannah at our fingertips in many cases and we walk right by it. And then as we walk by it, we turn to Allah and say, Oh Allah, give me Jannah. And He gave it to us. Brothers and sisters, we often cry about how our kids are a test and a challenge and, the, and that they are not on the straight path. Imam Haddad narrated this. He said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Serve your parents loyally, loyally and your children will serve you loyally. Be loyal to your parents and your children will be loyal to you. How many of us Look at our children and we wonder why they are not loyal to us. But we never look back at ourselves and see how unlaw how disloyal we are to our parents. Because the Prophet said, if we are loyal to them, our children would be loyal to us because they would see an example. This is a favor of Allah that He will give us. Do we really want that favor? Wrapping up the point on parents. When we deal with our parents, we should not expect them to show us gratitude. This is a problem we have. We think that when we do things for other people, they should show us gratitude. The believer is one who does things without the expectation of gratitude from someone else. And even if that person does not show him, him or her gratitude, they still do the same good deed over and over for that person, even if that person never shows them any gratitude. Why? Because it's not about them, it's about us and our relationship to Allah. So a person who is serving his parents should not expect gratitude from his parents and he should not look at the things that his parents ask of him as a chore or a challenge. This is how we maintain that right. This is how we become loyal to our parents. They have rights over us. And it's up to us to maintain those rights, those small things, so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a lot more that we can say about this. But I said we are speaking about family, right? Parents aren't the only ones in the family. So I'm just going to do about two or three more relations and then we are going to break. Children. But before I go on to children, there's a lot more I can say about the rights of parents. If nothing else, brothers and sisters, let in this month, as a reminder, go out and do something. Reach out to your parents. Even if you say, okay, you know what, I'm not going to do it on Father's Day. I'm going to do it the day before or the day after Father's Day. The same day in which you eat the turkey for Thanksgiving, the day before or the day after. Right? So I'm going to reach out to my parents, my father, the day before or the day after. If that is all it serves us as a reminder, then do that at least. Alhamdulillah, there are blessings in that. Right? Alhamdulillah, there are blessings in that. And if... Your parents, if you if you have been tested with the death of both of your parents, then there are many things that you can do to help the elderly. 
you can go volunteer at English House. It's right up here in West Philadelphia. Go volunteer a day to help the needy. Go to your own mansion and organize a day of feeding for the elderly. Do so many. There are many things that you can do to continue to be loyal to your parents. Because the loyalty to your parents does not just stop while they are alive. It also extends beyond their death. Continue to make dua for them. Giving charity in their name. All of these things are ways in which you can be loyal to your parents and it will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Children. The rights of our children are that they should be provided long, for as long as they need to be. Educated with excellence. Taught good character and excellent attributes. Protected from harm. They should be given good names. When husbands are choosing wives, they should choose good mothers for their children. And when women are choosing husbands, choose good fathers for your children. These are rights that our children have in Islam. I'm not making these are rights that our children have in Islam. The Prophet of Islam is reported to have said, specifically to the men, choose well for your sperm, marry those who match for the origins, penetrate. Meaning what? Characteristics pass on. The genes pass on. If you marry a knucklehead, what if that's what they're going to be in the relationship? So if you are looking for a righteous person and you are going to a place where unrighteousness exists and then you're hoping to find a righteous person there, I don't even know how to finish that statement. So I'll just leave it there. Brothers and sisters, our rights in Islam speak about thinking beyond the now. So when we are thinking of the rights of our children, it extends beyond right here and right now. It has to extend beyond that because they extend beyond us. So this is why it's important that when we are thinking of their rights, we think of their rights not now, but beyond us. What happens to them if we are no longer in the picture? What happens to them if the person I marry is not a righteous person? What happens to them if when I do things, I don't do it the right way? What am I teaching them? What am I giving them? What am I leaving for them? This is their right over us as parents. So this is especially for the young brothers and young sisters. We can't continue to make decisions the way we've been making decisions. We can't. And for those of us who make good decisions, Alhamdulillah, and may Allah continue to help us to make those good decisions. For those of us who are challenged with making good decisions, then I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables us to make the best decisions that are good for our soul and the souls of those over whom we have given jurisdiction because we have to answer for that because in our famous hadith of the prophet he said everyone is a shepherd so we all have to answer for something under children i want to speak specifically of daughters And a phenomenon that we are challenged with here in Philadelphia, in particular. Brothers, let me see what the, what the hadith is first. Whoever has three daughters or three sisters or two daughters and two sisters and takes good care of them and fears Allah with regard to them, that person will enter paradise. So I want to use that narration and contextualize this idea of wuliya or guardianship. So you, you've often heard the term of wakil or wali. This is the person who, when a sister is going to get married, he's the one who represents her. Brothers and sisters, and I think any imam here can attest to that. We have seen walis and wakils who are just absent from the job that they're supposed to do. They just abandon their post. 
they abandon they have, you have been given this as your duty and you abandon your post now we have the sister out there trying to figure this out herself or when you come into the picture you ask one question do you pray five times a day alhamdulillah okay good you're good for marriage what this is the best we can do with our charge we have to do better than that and conversely those who make marriage difficult for their charges fathers uncles whoever you are who make marriage difficult for your charges what do i mean by that you can't marry that man unless he comes with twenty thousand dollars as a dowry really really there's no middle ground for us as muslims we can't find a middle path that adheres to the sunnah of the prophet that encourages marriage and facilitates it as opposed to two extremes where we're either absent or we're so strict that we make marriage difficult when we have a very clear directive that this is a deen of wasat a deen of balance and moderation we cannot continue to be extreme in our engagement with our responsibilities and our Islam and then expect our Islam to benefit us it will not benefit us it cannot benefit us brothers and sisters so we have to do more we have to find a way to fulfill these rights in a way that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the last point I'll make on this is the relatives brothers and sisters we all know sometimes in our families or even in families of those we know that this practice of cutting off ties is a common practice if we had a habit of raising hands during the khutbah and I ask a question how many of you in your family you have a relative who has cut off ties from another relative I am certain over 80% of the people here will be raising their hands. Even if that cutting off of the relationship was for 5 years, 10, for some of us it's going to be 20 years. Stop for a Over what? When we really think back to what causes it, nothing. So why is this a problem, brothers and sisters? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He who believes in Allah and the last day, let him treat his guests honorably. He who believes in Allah and the last day, let him nurture the bonds of kinship. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, None shall enter Jannah who has cut off the ties of kinship. None shall enter Jannah who has cut off the ties of kinship. Imam al-Haddad in his, in his discussion on this, he says that severing the bonds or cutting off the ties of relations is one of the greatest sins that we can commit. It is one of the greatest sins that we can commit. How? It hastens the punishment in this life and prescribes for us a severe punishment in the hereafter. And if we maintain the ties of kinship, it hastens for us the blessings in this life and prescribes for us a great reward in the hereafter. But what does maintaining kinship ties look like? This is what it looks like. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who nurtures the bonds of kinship or the ones who maintains the bonds of kinship is not the one who is simply reciprocating but is the one who when these bonds are broken they try to repair them this is what maintaining the ties of kinship means for us as Muslims how does this look like to us? oh, that's how you're treating me? then I'm going to treat you just like that you don't want to come to my stuff, I'm not going to go to your stuff. 
You don't want to speak to me nicely, I'm not going to speak to you nicely. Or you're going to stop talking to me, then I'm going to stop talking to you too. We stand on our ground, we are men and That's something else. Maintaining the ties of kinship according to our messenger, our guide, our Rasul, Salaam is when that other person is trying to cut off the ties, what do we do? We go to repair them. This is maintaining the ties of kinship according to our religion. So that hopefully contextualizes it for us. We don't treat them the way they treat us. We treat them better than they treat us. This is our Islam. We treat others better than they treat us. This is how we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know that every single one of us, we are challenged with this in so many different ways.